Hey there, this is Ian, Solution Specialist at Candrone. Today I'm here to discuss the use of this AVSS parachute system with the M300. We often fly in heavily populated areas such as urban centers, and according to the TC Ames, you are required to reduce uh, or eliminate the possibility of severe injury should the system fail. Looking through this Transport Canada webpage for choosing the right drone for advanced operations, we scroll down and see that at the top of our list is indeed the Aerial Vehicle Safety Solutions Parachute System with our M300 and that is rated to fly over people. Let's install it. So my kit today includes of course the Matrice M300, some TB60 batteries, a Allen key wrench, USB-C cable and the AVSS parachute kit which includes this chute as well as a backup chute, the remote trigger device, and a whole bunch of installation brackets, which we will install on this M300. The HR30 and OSDK module, and some spacers, including some shoes in which these brackets will rest. Also very important are these longer screws, which we'll need once these spacers and the shoe is uh, installed on the M300. So to take off these legs, I like to invert the drone. I use this little foam cutout provided by DJI. Probably easier to pull the arms in while we're working on the drone. All right, so when you first pull open the set of spacers with the shoe for the brackets, there are a few layers you have to configure, make sure you have their order right. So these metal plates will go on the top, followed by these shoes, and then these plastic spacers. Now to make sure you put the right one on the correct side, you want to make sure the end with more grooves is going to be in the upward position. So we're dealing with the drone upside down. We have to think upside down. This groove on the underside should be at the rear. So this one goes on the right hand side or starboard side of the drone like so and then we reattach our leg configuration. All right, with this assembly all well layered, I'm going to install these longer bolts and reattach the leg to the M300. So we've installed one side, let's flip around and install the other side. Now that you have the spacers and the shoes installed on both legs, the screws are done up tight, it's time to flip back onto the right side and start to install the brackets. The brackets come in four different pieces. You're gonna wanna make sure that the bigger sections have these bumpers facing in. When you install them, I like to plant the first pivot point down, like so, and then rock it back till it rests nicely in place. With these smaller bracket pieces, you want to make sure that this small wing nut is on the outside. With these pieces, you want to feed this longer extension down into the shoe and let it rest 
in place against the first bracket piece you installed. Next, we'll install the HR30 cable with the OSD module. This can be a little tricky to install once you have the AVSS mounted. Now it's time to install the chute. Before we do so, I want to walk through the components of this chute. The HR30 cable will attach here at the front, like so. On the side here, you see our power button, and underneath this flap, you'll find the micro SD card. That's where there's a log of every single flight. It's also the SD card on which you would put a firmware update and install onto the AVSS system if you did need to update the firmware. You also see a small button. This can be depressed when you are looking to pair the AVSS with the remote trigger device. Lastly, you'll see that there is a USB-C port. That's what we'd use if we want to charge up the system prior to installing it on the M300. To install this unit on these brackets is a little bit cumbersome. You have to figure out the order in which you place it on these two brackets on either side. You can see there are three anchor points with which you have to lock this top unit into place. There. <clears throat> Once you have these three hook points on the side brackets hooked into the AVSS, the next step is to pull these, push these wing nuts in and do a half turn to lock this right on place. This should not go anywhere. Check that these brackets you installed are still seated nicely in the shoe that the system is fairly sturdy. Now in order to configure our M300 to make sure that this system will be compatible with it, we do have to use DJI's software on our laptop computer. Now if you haven't done so already, it's important that you download DJI Assist 2 the enterprise version. This is a freely available download found with a Google search. First plug in your M300 with a USB-C cable. All right, with your drone turned on and plugged in via USB-C cable, DJI Assist 2 Enterprise should display your M300. Before you go into the drone though, go into the settings tab and make sure that all four of these settings are toggled on. Once you've done that, go into your M300 RTK. Go down to Onboard SDK. Once you are in Onboard SDK, go up to the top and enable API Control. Now, go out of Pilot Assist, turn off your M300. Repower your M300. Go back into GJI Assist 2 and make sure that the changes you enabled have been saved. If these changes have not been made, then this system will not work properly. Okay, since my changes have been saved, I'm gonna power down the drone one last time so I can connect the HR30 cable, which will bring life to this AVSS parachute. Make sure the HR30 cable is twisted tight on both the AVSS system and at the OSDK port. At this point, when you turn on your M300, your AVSS should fire up as well. The solid purple means that there's an initialization step. The solid green means that the system is ready to pair. So I've turned on my trigger device and you hear the AVSS is now beeping. For these to actually synchronize properly, requires I move this to at least a three meter distance away. When your AVSS and your remote trigger device are too close, they will not communicate. 
So placing them three meters apart will give you a sense of their connectivity. As you can hear from the automated voice, I have a signal and as the light on the trigger device and the AVSS are green, it means that the units are paired. If they were not paired, you would have to run through a sequence of power cycles whereby on both the AVSS and the remote trigger device, you'd hold down the synchronization button while powering on. In the case of the AVSS, there's a small button here on the inside of this flap that I discussed earlier. You would hold this down with a small tool or a pen while you press this button. Doing so on this device would require this button sync next to power. Now with the devices paired together, the chute is still not armed until you take off and fly to at least 50 meters above ground level. At that point in time, you will get an indication from the trigger device that the system is armed. You will also get a flashing cyan light. When you come back down to below 50 meters, you will get an indication that the system is disarmed. It is important to note that the system is designed to deploy if the drone should get to 30 degree tilt or pitch at any point during flight. To prevent an accidental deployment of the chute, it is important that you fly the drone quite conservatively. Do not fly in S or sport mode and avoid sudden turns and stops. It is also important to note that with this OSDK module leading from the AVSS, the ingress or IP rating of this drone, particularly against water, might be diminished. Now you're ready to go out and fly with your AVSS system. If you do any firmware updates with this system installed, you should go back into DJI Assist 2 and make sure that those settings are re-enabled. Otherwise, the system will revert to its factory settings and it might not accommodate the AVSS system. If you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and head to candrone.com for more information about this and other devices. Always reach out to us with any questions you have, we'd be happy to help.